I now call upon Dr. Philip Cariatlis to speak on behalf of St. Andrew's Theological College. With profound sentiments of deep sadness, but at the same time of unfailing hope in the resurrection, we have gathered together here in this Cathedral of the Annunciation of Our Lady to farewell from this life a preeminent church leader and distinguished hierarch of our ecumenical patriarchate. Indeed, one could only infer that his falling asleep in the Lord on the feast day of the Annunciation was nothing less than divine providence for a man who spent his whole life announcing the word and preparing the way for others to follow. Archbishop Stylianos was truly a great theological scholar and inspiring teacher of the Christian faith an archbishop who radically changed the course of the Greek Orthodox Church here in Australia upon his arrival in 1975. During his 44-year tenure as Archbishop of Australia, the Church saw the establishment of many benevolent institutions, day schools, aged care facilities, organi organizations caring for people with special needs, social welfare centres, with the addition of scores of parishes around Australia and so much more. Beyond these achievements, however, that which stands above and apart was arguably his inimitable vision to give birth to an accredited theological college, which he did in 1986 through the Sydney College of Divinity, knowing full well that such an institution would maintain the well-being and the viability of the church here in the Antipodes, as he liked to call Australia. Indeed, speaking today on behalf of all graduates of St. Andrew's Greek Orthodox Theological College, of which too I was blessed to be, and subsequently as a member of its faculty, we give thanks to God today at this solemn hour for our founding dean, who in the place and type of Christ can rightly be called the college's chief cornerstone. It will be incumbent upon all of us who serve in the theological college to continue to strengthen these firm foundations that he inaugurated. In hearing his inspirational lectures and in reading his published works, his books, his articles, and vast poetic anthology, one quickly discerned not only a consummate scholar, but a man marked by a strikingly inclusive and comprehensive vision of the world, a man with a heart wide open, ready to encounter and embrace the uniqueness of all that he beheld. This was most evident in his broad ecumenical openness, where he was always ready to learn, to receive, and be enriched by all those of goodwill whom he encountered from the different Christian denominations and other faiths more generally. He was the first appointed co-chair in the official international theological dialogue between the Roman Catholic and Orthodox churches and a host of other bilateral and multilateral dialogues. His ecumenical acclaim was recognised by the Sydney College of Divinity, from which he received an honorary doctorate in 2001, indeed one of many, and which several years later acknowledged him as its first professor of theology. Over and above his academic achievements, he was a man who understood all things to have been created by God out of love and therefore as being sacred. Not only the human person, but even the slightest blade of grass and every living creature was for him nothing less than an epiphany of God. 
In class, we would often be reminded never to remain indifferent to anyone or anything. This loving predisposition to uncover the original beauty of creation is seen most distinctly in the Archbishop's poetry. What many of us might at first sight have considered mundane is precisely what is both valued and transfigured in his prodigious anthology. The seemingly ordinary is reborn and recast into its original beauty. Indeed, he wrote that poetry was nothing less than intensive care over the bleeding creation. This radical openness to and love for all creation can be seen, for example, in a short poem that he wrote about simple seashells. He wrote, collecting seashells on the beach, you shake hands with the invisible. As creations of God, these too were able to remind the Archbishop and reveal to him the love and immediacy of God. Whilst one could speak at length of his eloquence, I leave you with but one example, which I believe can console and comfort us and comfort the loss that we are all experiencing. In a poem entitled Mother Forgive, his eminence compares a person lying in a coffin to an infant secured in a cradle of worship. If he could speak to us today, he would remind us that even in our death, lying in a coffin, we all remain God's children, or as the poem states, infants in a cradle, where our Heavenly Father will forever cradle us, namely keep us secure in a reality of endless joy and worship. May we all be comforted in knowing that the Archbishop ran the good race to the end, faithful to his calling as a Bishop of the Church of Christ, and that he is now in the peace and loving embrace of our Lord and Saviour, in whom we trust now and always. Amen.